Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, beautiful downtown Grand Forks, the proud home of the University of North Dakota. This is the time for the Grand Forks Growth Fund, the Jobs Development Authority. Uh, first item on the agenda, roll call. Michael? Here. Kelsky? Here. Weber? Here. Lansky? Here. Bonnie? Here. Danny? Here. And Mayor Richards. Here. Very good. Thank you. Item 2.1, request for lease termination form communications. Mr. Freeland. Chair Weber and members of the Jobs Development Authority. Um, we had a really good meeting, and uh, thanks for your initial um, recommendation at the, the last JPA meeting to take a further review and, and look at um, further options uh, for the JDA. So, in the meantime, uh, we did follow up with uh, various entities that are note noted in your staff report that are interested in this Grand Forks Herald space. The importance of the Grand Forks Herald space is that it doesn't have the EDA requirements. And so obviously we're, we're gonna be in charge of the reinvestment in that area, but they can be longer term leases. Um, that would fit the, the building and kind of where we're going from a tech accelerator perspective. And so we did follow up with the, the growth fund committee. Uh, they did unanimously had lots of great questions and did uh, follow up with, um, it's either now or within the next year. And so if we're gonna get the space, space fitted up, uh, regardless, we're gonna have some downtime. So uh, if we should move forward at this point in time. And so that was a recommendation uh, from that, from that uh, the growth fund committee. Also wanna note um, beyond the interest that uh, um, we did have a really good, uh, advisory uh, meeting this past week and lots of excitement um, with the current users and other interest in that. So I think there's a lot of excitement. Uh, Meredith Richards also uh, let me know that uh, the EDA uh, leases have been approved. So you're, you're going to start seeing tenants um, in the building now that um, uh, EDA and Denver have signed up on those. And so some of those entities that have been waiting to move in will be able to move in now. And, and you'll also see further starting this summer and fall a lot of programming, programming regarding the tech accelerate, accelerator, and but also um, upskilling that we talked about too. So you're going to really see um, a lot of activity um, starting um, this summer and into, into the fall with um, people that are working on here and also programming. So with that, I'd answer uh, any questions, and I know we likely have to have a public hearing on this. Thank you, Todd. Um, with that, uh, open the public hearing on item 2.1. Does anyone wish to speak to this item? Hearing no one wishing to speak, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, uh, JDA members, any comments or questions? Mr. President, Sam. Question, Mr. Taylor. Uh, so would there be an option for us to build the suit? If somebody comes in and wants to lease that, that space and they have a specific fit up that they want, are we able to do that? Or do we have specific requirements that we have to build that space too, which is why we're going to make the investment in to fit up and then it is what it is. What's the problem there? Uh, Council President saying that's a very good question. We talked a lot about that. Uh, we have, I think, six entities that are interested. They're, you know, some I think are going to just want common space. Others I think are going to want locked offices. And uh, so we're going to work with all the various entities that are not, not, noted in there and look at what they, their needs are up front. You know, after this meeting, if we move forward, uh, Harold will be in there for another month. And so we'll work with all those various entities on what their space needs and what kind of office setup they need and and uh, come back to you with a, with a, a further concept that makes sense uh, for that space. And so if we're if we're funding the fit up and the additional that we'd be recouping our costs and we in, built into the lease, correct? We will be, yep, along with the day-to-day -day O and 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 if it's something that we're going to ask for above and beyond, we may have to talk about that from a construction perspective. Thank you. I'll take a quick moment, Ms. Richards. Congratulations. This uh, this building represents a, a complicated uh, amount of work, uh, creative work using the federal funds. And I know that the uh, approval of those final leases or that final approval for the leases has been a, a tricky step as well. Congratulations on that. So, President, or if I could concur, and, um, we want uh, Ms. Richards to stay as long as she, she can. She's done a lot of great projects, but this is another great capstone project that, that Meredith has worked on. So we're, the whole entire team is thankful that she's still here leading them. And um, she does so much and uh, does it so quietly. Uh, Mr. Weber, Mayor, Chair Weber, I, you know, to me, I think it's as simple as dollars and cents here. You got, you know, 
attending right now, it's about $15 an hour, give or $15 a square foot. We can we need to do a two to three month fit up or, or longer, whether they're in here or it's holding us from having a $20 tenant later. I'd rather have that happen where you have a $15 tenant and not a $20 tenant. So you're changing a lower, uh, a shorter lease for a long-term lease at a higher rate. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to move forward. Now that we've seen this um, groundswell from different companies that have an interest in being here, I think it shows that it's a, it's a space that uh, will be utilized in a very short order. And is that a motion? It's all motion to approve. We have a motion on the floor. Second, Second from Mrs. Sowski. Any further questions, comments? If I can say, oh, Mr. Field, yes, please. please. Uh, two things that have been spoken of. We are, uh, as part of the, this construction project, the ventilate, the HVAC units um, will get installed this year. We do the supply chains, those are delayed, so you'll see those uh, come to fruition. And then we'll also come back with some roof improvements that we need to make on the building. And I think those are the two last major pieces um, regarding the building, other than some internal fit up um, projects. Very good. With that, we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed and sign. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, item 2.2, .2, request for proposals for naming rights, sponsorships at the Hive and Switchers. Thank you. More on this building. Um, the request tonight is to author, authorize staff to issue a request for proposals for naming rights for the various... Oh, thank you. Um, for the various spaces within this building, you may recall last February we issued a request for proposals for naming rights for the building itself, for the exterior. Um, this public process is required since we are selling an asset. Once we go through this public process, then we can accept proposals just on a first come, first serve basis. Um, we did not get any response to that first RFP. This second RFP, assuming you authorize us to issue it, we will. Um, in conjunction with issuing the RFP host, we're planning to host kind of a soft launch of this facility, um, targeting potential donors and sponsors to you know, build interest in that. Um, the draft RFP in your packet shows a, a May date. We're looking now at early June, but um, presumably now with all the kind words that have been spoken, this building is more or less finished. We think it will do a lot to just get people into the building and, and see what a great space it is in terms of building up interest in sponsors and um, naming rights. So with that, certainly willing to answer any questions, but the request is just to authorize them to go ahead with the issue that RFP. Very good. Uh, with that, I'll open the public hearing on item 2.2. Does anyone wish to speak to item 2.2? Hearing no one, I'll close that public hearing. Uh, any questions or comments? Motion from Mr. Kwame, a second from President Sandy. Uh, any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. She passes unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Richards. And uh, item 2.3 EDA RLF update and plan certificate. Ms. Richards. Me again. Um, in terms of an update, um, you may recall that this was a COVID Response CARES Act funded grant that the city received from the U.S. Economic Development Administration. Um, we received 1.5 million approximately of that. Um, about a year ago today, we completed loaning out 1.4 million of that. Um, the good news is that the payments are starting to come in. Those payments revolve and we get to keep them. Um, that kind of plays into the recertification part. Um, we have submitted a plan to EDA when we got the funds, that plan mostly focused on that initial disbursement in, in terms of meeting the COVID response needs. Um, now that we're entering the revolve phase, we said at the time that this would mirror our previous EDA RLF that was also disaster recovery from 25 years ago, um, with the focus of those funds being gap financing for primary sector businesses. Um, EDA does like us to recertify that plan annually, so that's what we're here for. Um, as you know, we're in, in the process of wrapping up a strategic planning activity with the Growth Fund Committee. And so um, at the conclusion of that, we may have some more specific uses for this, perhaps targeting it to, well, we haven't decided that, but something, for instance, targeting daycare so that we can address workforce with gap financing for daycare facilities. Um, in any case, what we're asking for now is just authorization to get, um, provide an interim recertification to EDA. And then after we wrap up that um, strategic planning activity, we'll come back with a, a final 
kind of updated plan that really focuses on the revolve phase rather than the initial disbursement. Um, in terms of update, it's, it's all pretty good news. Um, our uh, default rate is pretty low considering this is disaster recovery and we're looking at having nearly um, half a million dollars revolved by the end of this year. So we'll be looking at ways to get that spent and, and help the community and make EDA happy with our utilization. So that, um, again, happy to answer any questions, but the request is to just um, recertify the existing plan. Very good. And again, thank you and, and congratulations to you and Colin for the, the work on this. Yeah, um, this is a great hire. Yes. Um, uh, with that, I'll open the public hearing on item 2.3. Does anyone wish to speak to item 2.3? Hearing that, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, looking for a discussion or a motion related to certifying the existing RLF plan currently approved by the ED, uh, EDA. I'm approved. Got motion and second. Motion from President Sandy, second from Mr. Sasky. Any questions to the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, say goodbye by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion second. Here we go. Uh, all in favor, say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you. All right, we'll move along here. We'll call the order of the Board of Equalization, which consists of the City Council of Grand Forks. Uh, welcome, everybody. Roll call, please, Marie. Weigel. Here. Sosky. Here. Weber. Here. Lansky. Here. Lamy. Here. Sandy. Here. Here. So I believe there was a total of 13 protests. Um, but I guess you want to read off. Why don't you just read off item 1.2, and then I'll start going through it and start steps. Sure. Uh, 1.2 then is consider protest recommendations from the city of Sandy with the property assistance. So first, I want to thank you, Seth. I know you guys did a lot of work following up and going out to one of these properties and, and working with them. It looks like E and L have been withdrawn, so now we're just going to be uh, speaking to A, B, C, D. F, G, H, I, J, and K, and we'll just take them one at a time. Did you have any words before we start? I do. I just really wanted to kind of give you a quick review of how we got to this evening. April 3rd was our initial equalization evening um, for all property owners within the city of Grand Forks to appeal their values. Um, the property owners that appealed and spoke up or emailed us for that evening are the properties and the owners that we are talking and discussing tonight. Um, if there are property owners in, within the city that wish to appeal their values, they can go to the county at the county level um, and to take care of it at that level as well. So, but tonight I just wanted to point out that we are only discussing the net of 11 properties this evening. All right, why don't we take them one at a time? We'll start with A720 North 4th Street. Yes, so this property um, is a single family home. Um, I can make this very short. Because in my staff report, I've given you the reasons for the, what we found in our inspections, the conditions of the properties. And I, if you allow me to go a little rogue here, the four residential properties that we had um, appeal, their conditions in all cases were different than what we anticipated and knew. So it, I do, we have a um, lower, we want to, we recommend lowering the value in all of them. We've, make sure that our value is supported by the sales that have happened within our city within the last year. And if we haven't had um, the sales for within the last year, we've gone back. But our values are supportable by the sales that have occurred. And so um, if you have questions on any one of them in particular, I surely would answer any of those. So you're regarding A through D right now? Is A through D, but I will take one and two approved or to make the motion to approve, but unless we have a question. So yeah. the uh, the property owners, have, have they been told what yes. they're new and are they still going to continue to appeal or? To my knowledge, we have con had conversations with them and discussed what our findings were and they are in agreement with our new reduced yeah. values. And if we approve A through D tonight and they still decide that they're not in agreement, they still have the opportunity to go to the county and Correct. for further discussion. I will move right. approval of A through D. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we have a second. Yeah, we have a second. I'm gonna list them off just for the record then, and then I wanna make sure no one's here to speak on, on those items. So 
Uh, a would be 720 North 4th Street, B would be 409 North 3rd Street, C would be 314 North 8th Street, and D would be 201 Chestnut Street. Was there anybody here to speak on those four properties? All right, no, we've got a, a motion and a second. So leave that motion to be to accept the city assessor's assessment. But, uh, got a motion and a second. Any further comment? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, now we'll move on to, now we have commercial properties. Do you want to take these in a block? Do you want to do one at a time? Here? Um, let's take them one at a time, I think. So we'll do, uh, now we're on the 1.2 F, which would be 2800 South Columbia Road. Correct. This is the Sears, Farmer Sears, Sears building and parking lot. Um, this, the Sears building, the Sears owns the two parcels. So they own the parcel with the building on it and they lease, they have a long-term lease with the mall or the parking lot. So they have the interest in that parking lot and that's how they're able to appeal this value. Um, I have valued this property using our cost approach. Uh, we've supported that valuation with our income approach and it's bracketed by the sales that we've had within the city on a square foot basis. Uh, as you know, the cost approach is what we rely on most heavily to value commercial, all properties, but especially important with commercial because of the difference extras that can be involved in each property. Um, a point in my income approach is we, my income approach is valuing the property as it sits. So I'm looking at it as a single tenant occupancy where that tenant, it's a triple net lease. And what that triple net lease is, that tenant is going to pay for the taxes or taxes, insurance and utilities. So that's what, that's how I've done it. We've used market rent for that large of a building. We've used vacancy rates and expenses and a larger cap rate than um, typical, but it's consistent with what we've done with other big box properties. Um, our inc indicated value from the income approach is the 3,845. My cost approach was 3,844. Um, coincidentally, they're very close. That doesn't happen very often, but in this case, that is. So, and we've had the recent sales to support this value. Um, they range from $16 to $45 per square foot. Uh, in addition, I'm equitable with other anchors in that area for the land and improvement. Sears is valued at $35.49. JCPenney is at $37.66 and Macy's at $36.62. Um, I have when we looked at, I also looked at the, the land as it sits. When the land is worth more than the property as it sits, it's really hard to lower the value. So I do recommend that we uphold the value of $3,844,000. All right. With approval, Mr. Weber, seconds to approve. Uh, Mr. Cabana seconds for the comment. Uh, so I have motion to uh, again accept the city assessor's assessment. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carries unanimously. We're not a G2273, 32nd Avenue South. Um, the next property that we have is Lithia Ford. And I think we do have Mr. Tannenbaum. He emailed me that he was going to be um, on with us this evening. Uh, would you like to have Mr. Tannenbaum speak first? Or do you want to yes. Speak? Okay. Mr. Tannenbaum, it looks like we got to 480 numbers at you, sir. Yes, correct. All right, please, the floor is yours. Okay, we do have two different uh, appeals today, two different cases. They're both dealership properties. Um, and to be honest, this one, I uh, just want to make sure, this one's actually the superior case that we have. Um, the other dealership case we have, to be honest, um, we're very close on improvements uh, for the county. And the reason I bring that up is that's really our main issue when it comes to dealerships is the improvement value. We tend to value these dealerships, and I'll try to be brief. Um, I don't know how much time I have, but um, throughout the nation, we have many hundreds of dealerships we represent because what happens is it's very difficult on income. There's hardly any income. Um, they're usually owner-occupied. Um, almost all of the dealerships we have are owner-occupied, so it's hard to get anything, and there's various sections of the dealership. When it comes to market sales, there's two issues with that. One is every dealership is very unique. I mean, they have such different sections and they're valued very differently per Marshall and Swift or per cost. So it's difficult to value them per another sale. 
Additionally, most sales include other factors, personal property, inventory, franchise fees, licensing fees. So it's very hard to, even if an ownership says it's real property, it's very hard to actually look at a market sale and try to figure out what the actual land and improvements were just for a sale. So to us, we are left with, and most counties throughout the nation um, that we deal with now understand that and actually look at the cost approach most of the time for dealerships. And when it comes to dealerships in general, it's usually the improvement value when we do get reductions uh, quite a bit um, off of that. The land is very difficult. There's not usually a lot of land comps right on the same street or the same size, and it's difficult to prove a much lower land value. So when it comes to this property and most dealerships that we deal with, it's really the cost approach and lower improvements that we're looking at. Um, and you'll see the difference between this case and the next case when we get there, but this one really is the case that we're most concerned about because what you'll notice is, um, first thing is it's a very basic dealership that was built in 1998. Um, these type of dealerships due to market, et cetera, need to remodel it over the years. And this one has not really kept up to pace with some of the newer dealerships. Um, and as far as the value, if we go to page, I'm sorry, two, of our packet, the dealership in total is valued by the county at $8,038,000 or $141.57. Um, I do know that's an increase um, from the prior year, but I know each year stands on its own. So it's a little over $8 million for the dealership by the county. We have a cost approach that gives us a value, according to our page number two, of close to $5 million, but that's a little misleading because we do have land comps that support lower I just don't think we have enough land comps, and that kind of skews our cost approach to be much lower. Um, but I'll get to that when I get to our cost approach. What is important to note is that on page three, you have some information on the subject property, again, built in 1998. The building square feet is 56,779 square feet on 7.86 acres. It is a large piece of land, and that needs to be taken into account on what the per square foot value should be. But again, as noted here on, I believe, our page number three, the county's land value is $6.44 a square foot. Unfortunately, we don't have similar sized land comps that sold to us in the last few years um, that would support a lower value. So that's going to be difficult to get lower the land portion of the cost. But the improvement value is really what we believe, especially given the year built to the subject, is not worth 5.8 million rounded. And that's the amount that the county gives for the subject improvements is 5 million, um, a little over 5.8 million, as you can see on our page three. Uh, let me get back to our property here. I actually hit the wrong button. So if you just give me one second here, um, for some reason I exited. Okay, so on our page three, again, you'll notice the improvements are on for $102.71. So the majority of the value is on the improvements for the subject property. Following pages is where the subject is located. We give you some aerials. We give you a front view, a more closer view to show you that there's nothing really special about this dealership. Rectangular, um, very average built for 1998. Now, what's interesting, even though it's average built on page nine, our main evidence, we actually give it a newer effective year um, because these properties are somewhat remodeled, but this one has not been tremendously, but we still gave it the benefit of the doubt. And for example, we broke down each section, and for example, the first section here, the showroom, built in 1998, but we gave it a 2005 effective year. The other sections we gave essentially 2000 effective year because those aren't really remodeled much at all through the years, the warehouse, the service repair garage, et cetera. But what we did was, these are numbers strictly from Marshall and Swiss, which is what um, most, whether it's counties or most uh, agents, et cetera, people use to value costs for Marshall and Swiss. Now, what's interesting about this is, again, we just plug in the numbers um, here, and you'll notice that, for example, we do it for every dealership. On the next dealership, we're not, we're close to the county's value on improvements, but this one we are not. Um, so, for example, we take every section without taking too much time, you know, whether it's effective year, class, type, et cetera. We take the replacement cost new number per those sections for Marshall Swift, for example, showroom, $129 a square foot to the far right there. We take a current multiplier, we take a local multiplier, all those add to the value. So it doesn't help us whatsoever, but those are supposed to be in there. Depreciation, we take per Marshall and Swift. We take every single section per those factors, and then we add about 250,000, we added for paving, lighting, what have you, which is more than reasonable given this 
the year of the property. And what ends up happening is uh, we also added a 10% entrepreneurial profit, which is questionable since these are all owner user properties. And if somebody were gonna buy it with a different dealership, where's the profit? They would have to remodel it per their specifications. But conservatively, 10% is more than conservative for this type of property. So if you take all those factors, um, we have what we call the RCNLD or replacement cost new, less depreciation, but including other factors and entrepreneurial profit, and we have a value on our page nine of 4,095,719. Now that improvement value is approximately 1.8 million less than the county. So there's a very large number there difference between our improvement value and the county's. And hopefully you'll take into account our improvement value and come up with an overall lower value. Just so you're aware, we have Marshall and Swift pages all given here, all the sections on the following pages after page nine. The following pages after page nine include the areas, the replacement cost new number per Marshall and Swift on C average. And then we've also included other pages in here as far as the life expectancy, uh, depreciation tables, and even the multiplier tables. And so we've shown you exactly how we arrived at our improvement numbers. The only thing extra that we have in this packet is on page 19. Unfortunately, we only provided two land sales so I'm gonna to have to leave it up to the board. The land sale one is similar because it's it's uh, almost nine acres and we're almost eight acres and it's sold for 212. But again, we put the location of that on page 20 and we did a full co-star printout of those land sales. But that's really difficult because we've only provided two land sales, one similar size, but not necessarily extremely close to the subject. So overall, to be fair on a cost basis, it seems, especially on the improvements, that there should be an overall lower value. And that completes our presentation. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tannenbaum. Is there any questions from the board at this time for him? You have a question now, please, Mr. Cabrera. Just, just a question on, on comps. I think it was provided, some were provided by Pivot Tax Solutions, but are we using the sale of the, the Toyota dealership as a comp? So I'm assuming that's our information that we're- That's using. our information, yep. Yeah. And, and then we're showing, you know, the comps at $245 a square foot for the Mandan space, which is the improvement to the land. Yep. And, and that's their number or our number, just to clarify. Um, the Mandan information is new dealerships that were yep. built with cost at, at, at in their, their actual cost to build. Yeah, so it's, so it's not directly comparable. Correct. Okay. Thank you. In, in my response, <laughs> Any other questions before I move on? All right, please. If my response to all of that is that um, the cost approach that uh, Mr. Tannenbaum provided to us, I feel should be disregarded. He's valuing it as an average build, average quality building. It is better than that. When you use that, it should be more of a good quality. And when I look at the descriptions provided in Marshall and Swift, that is what is most fitting for this property. Um, by using the average quality, of course, then the depreciation is accelerated. So that's going to underestimate and undervalue the property. There were items that weren't included in his cost approach, basement area, sprinklers, underground fuel tanks, elevators, office me mezzanine, um, and some missed square footage of a warehouse and automotive sales. The land value that he provided, the comps that he provided are, um, the one is raw land, not applicable to this property, and the other one is a residential lot. I have sale, I provided sales for you in my packet of land sales within the proximity of this property that support our land value. So recapping, undergrading of the property, accelerated depreciation, missing building components, land value that's not reflective, all contribute to undervaluing this property. And then we have the two sales that happened within our city. One's a vacant dealership, one is the Toyota. And I confirmed with the sellers, or the buyers, excuse me, that it was, did not include any franchise fees, did not include any personal property. He provided me with the um, closing statement. 6.2 is, what he paid for it. So with all of that information, I I'll recommend that we uphold our value. Do you have the same arguments hold for uh, item H? Yes. 
Um, great. Okay. Yes. Great. I think they are the same arguments. I think in your staff report, though, um, if you refresh, oh, let's finish this one before I go to that one, please. Any other questions for me? Yeah, uh, Vice President Weber. Um, a, a lot of this seems to hinge on the judgment between uh, good and average, which sounds like a very subjective uh, judgment, but actually you provided us with the criteria. These are actually uh, quite objective, discrete categories. Could, could you speak to that for just a, a moment longer? You've already addressed it. But what's the difference between good and average? Um, good and average is going to be the quality of the materials used, chlorine, um, updates, um, storefront, um, is block, stucco. I mean, there's a variety of things that are going to encompass a good quality building versus an average quality building. If I go back to our sales, an average quality building is the sale that sold at, um, on South Washington, 1300 South Washington. That's an average quality construction. I was, uh, thanks. Thanks for that. What, what I was getting at was it, it could almost sound like a matter of opinion. This is good Absolutely. or average. Uh, sure. But uh, it seems the, the, the criteria listed here that uh, it, it's actually far more specific than that. But there are uh, uh, numerous uh, aspects that you go through and identify. Uh, it isn't simply one person's opinion over another. These things have been classified. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Am I allowed to have a rebuttal or a closing on this? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so I probably I've done this eleven years. I've probably done maybe close to three hundred dealerships at least, uh, and I visited I countless amounts of dealerships, and I've dealt with what the counties look at on dealerships, and I can tell you it's the average, and and here's why. First of all, it's very specific. Yes, in in Marshall and Swift, but but it's very close, and what we've come to realize is this. If it, there's only three categories, well, there's four low cost, but C excellent would be not just a new building, but hardly anyone uses C excellent. It has to be not only a brand new dealership, but one that's construction design and quality is vastly superior to any other dealership that's new. So what is after excellent? There's only good and average. A good dealership is typically between five to 15 years old, and it's not only five to 15 years old, but typically at least is average or superior in construction design quality, et cetera. The subject property is not only over 20 years old, but all the materials, construction design, et cetera, are average. So we don't see anything else but average for this type of dealership, and that's consistent as far as we're concerned throughout the nation. But that's all we have. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mayor Machensky, I've got a question. Yeah, Mr. Weigel, please. Has the gentleman visited this dealership in question? Somebody at our, uh, somebody here has at our, at Pivotal Tax, meaning I've talked to them about it. I've visited many, but not this one. Okay, thank you. All right, it's up to the board this time. I know, I think we've had, granted you go year by year, this is, I think every year we, we have done this one and looked at it. Okay. Yeah, I think this is the second year off the top of my head that they have appealed. Okay. Well, it's yeah. higher value this year, too. So. Yeah. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Weber. I'll move to uphold the 2023 true and full values listed below, listed on the staff report. We got a motion uh, from Vice President Weber and second from President Sandy. Any further comment from Council? All right, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Both same sign. Motion carries unanimously. So the reason I asked to hold on to vote to number H is it appeared that we may have had a duplicate staff report attached to item number H, which is the Lithia Chrysler Center. So I'm wanting to make sure that you have that information there. Got their laptops, they want to pull up. Item H, make sure it's not a repeat. It, was it a repeat of G? Is that the issue? It, it, yes. My apologies that I did not catch that. They're the same staff reports, it was just a typo on the agenda. Yeah, essentially the same. My comments and arguments are going to be the same on this particular one as we were on the Lithia Ford. 
So uh, is, there, is there, do we have Mr. Canavan representing this uh, agent yes. as well? I mean, is there, was that encapsulated, Mr. Canavan? Are you still there? Was that kind of encapsulated in your previous statements, or is there more that you wanted to add in item H? Well, the only thing I wanted to add is that on this one, even if you add, I think we left out entrepreneur profit, even if you add that, we're only about 200,000 or so difference in improvement value. We just want to point that out versus the other dealership. And, and maybe next year you'll, you'll be maybe more fair looking at the cost approach into the taxpayer, but that's up to you. That's all we have. So I'm good. So thank you for being here today. Thank you. I'll move down. We got a motion to the fold, and we have a second. The motion president saying second from Vice President Weber. Further comment from the council on item H. All right, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, right. oh, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. All right, we got aye, 34th, 52nd Avenue. Yes, so Sorry. I'll go rogue on you again. Um, AI, J, and K are all holiday gas stations and convenience stores with car washes. Okay. Um, my comments are the same. Do we have someone here to speak on those items this evening? Not to my knowledge. Just going to open the floor then. I'm going to list off. Um, so I would be 3450 32nd Avenue South. J would be 2250 South Columbia Road. And K would be 4005 South Washington Street. Not um, anyone here to speak on those items, those properties? All right. Seeing none. So why don't you, yeah, if you want to continue, please. So I've gone through these cost, um, Marshall and Swift cost approaches again that, that have been submitted. Um, they use a mild climate. There's nothing about us that is mild. We are definitely cold and extreme. Um, they've accelerated depreciation again. Um, they've undervalued the land. I mean, we kind of go through the same items that we talked about with the other um, the other properties. But um, uh, 2250 South Columbia Road. So they have the inaccurate climate rating, overstated or uh, accelerating depreciation. They missed um, underground storage tanks and the underestimated land values. Mm -hmm. um, all of those contribute to underestimating the value. And this particular one, we are I'm recommending that we uphold the value of $1,079,000. So I and J are recommending upholding the value. Yes, right? and that's my reason for my pausing is to make sure that I got the right numbers okay. because there is one that I did. Now, item, looks like item K, which is uh, 4005 South Washington Street, you did have an adjustment on that one. Can you explain that to us? Yes, um, we had a canopy listed twice. Okay. So that accounted for the reduction, the requested reduction. So you have that in your staff report as your recommendation. So if we just approve yes. your recommendation, all through that would be included? Yes. All right. I'll move to the staff recommendation. All right, we've got a motion to Accept the city assessment assessment in a second. And a second. So motion present saying second from Mr. Cavani. Any further comments from council? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Mm -hmm. On the 1.3 is the store set. Uh, certified 2023 annual assessments. So I will certify our true and full value uh, for a five million seven no five billion. $791,142,000. Uh, that is after all our changes for the tax year of 2023. Um, one thing I just wanted to note with you is we've had conversations about where we lie within our state compliance. That state compliance ranges from 90% to 100% in our sales ratio and in our values. And we are in compliance with in both cases. So. That would be 94 or 95 percent, is that yep. where that to yep. the residential commercial? Okay. Yep. All right, so we have a motion to certify 2023 annual assessments mm -hmm. in the county auditor. Got a motion for President Sandy, second for Ms. Lonsky. Any further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. 1.4 annual report, which is information. That's attached. All right, yes. thank you. So we're looking for a motion to adjourn. Do you have a comment, Mr. Yeah, Sheldon? Quick comment, please. Good job for the assessment department. Really good work this year. Thank you. Really appreciate all the effort and for dealing with the people that had concerns. Thank you so much. We I think we just had a motion to yes. a second from Ms. Oselski. All those in favor, signify by the same aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed, same sign. Thank, Thank you to all of you for letting me kind of go off.
little off schedule. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on. Call the order of the Grand Forks City Council meeting for Monday, May 1st, 2023. Roll call, please, Marine. Here. 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 Here.
there are five food banks, four in Grand Forks, and one in East Grand Forks. And we help each one of them as much as we can. So if you can't donate any food, you can make out a check to NALC Branch 517, National Association of Letters Branch 517, and we'll distribute it among the five food banks. Now, some years ago, I was watching TV, and I'm a fan of old westerns and old mysteries. So there was a movie on about in the 40s, and it was in front of this hotel. And I seen this guy uh, walking around, and he was either advertising the hotel. He had a sandwich board on it. And a little while, I'll show you what the sandwich board is. This was one-sided. But then the light went off in my head. And if it was in my head, it had to be a, a pen light, a small light, to go off in my head. But anyway, uh, what you call it? I thought, well, that would be a great idea to participate, to pump up our food drive. So I went to a friend of mine who owns a shop. I told him I wanted to. And he says, yeah, I'll give you a deal. Told me the price. And then so I went to another friend of mine and said, I need a check from you. He wrote me out a check. And uh, which I call, and then every so often, uh, I'll be May 8th, I got some appointments, but May 8th, weather permitting, I'll be walking around the busy streets of Grand Forks, maybe East Grand Forks, to show you what we do. This is a sandwich board. I designed it and then a friend of mine made it up. So I'll be walking around the streets of Grand Forks trying to pump up our food drive. Any participation you can do, I expect a lot of food this year. And people have asked me over the years, what do you expect to collect this year? Will you be disappointed if you don't collect a lot? And I always tell them at the <clears throat> newspaper interviews and Herald and TV interviews, I said, if all 60 carriers and volunteers went out and at the end of the day, trucks came back and there was only one can of pork and beans, I'd be happy because that's something we didn't have before. I want to thank everybody. Remember, May 13th, the second Saturday in May is our food drive. It's always the second Saturday. That's why I didn't date this. I always put it to second day, Saturday in May. And thank you for everybody. Oh, if anybody out there sees Ralph, I'll go shake his hand and give him a check. Otherwise, help participate uh, on May 13th. So, really appreciate what you do. A uh, couple of announcements today. Looks like we got the first day of May. We don't quite have green grass yet, and all the snow isn't melted, but it does look like uh, people are all starting to enjoy the trails where they're not flooded. So, it's good to see everybody out and about. Uh, just this last Thursday, I had a chance to go speak at Central High School with a, a bunch of kids. The theme was. Uh, do your personal best. So I enjoyed being there and I want to thank uh, Central staff for inviting me and hosting me. And then over the weekend, I participated in, a, in an autism walk um, just to bring some awareness and, and raise money over at uh, the Grand Cities Mall. So I want to thank uh, Dr. Patricia Lee and her staff for doing a great job putting that event together. And I uh, really turned out to be a great day. So thank you for that. That's all I got for announcements. Move on to two citizen comments. I got two comments today. Um, just uh, Gretchen Rapp. Ms. Graff, please. Mr. Mayor and Honorable City Council members, um, twice in the last year, I haven't had occasion to come to your meeting to support people who were supporting various causes. And I was very surprised by the tone of public comments. And I spoke with some of my friends about that who are also very surprised by it. So I have come to say thank you for allowing people to speak and being gracious to them. I know for myself, I don't always do my best work in a negative atmosphere when people are yelling at me. And I thought that might be true for you, <laughs> maybe not. So I came today to tell you, there are tens of thousands of people in Grand Forks who think you're doing a good job. 
and they don't show up because they think they don't have to pay attention, you'll take care of us. Thank you for reading everything you have to read and knowing what you have to know. We appreciate you. And when you vote tonight, please remember us. Thank you, Ms. Graff. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Roland Reimers. Sorry, Mr. Reimers, you got to go right after that. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Council. Uh, this evening, I won't take up too much of your time. I just wa I wanted to make a report on the uh, Red Force Police Department uh, uh, policy on body cams, and maybe they, they have a policy, but they're not following it. Uh, the policy is you when know, an officer arrives at the scene, he turns on his camera, and he doesn't turn it off till the event is done. Uh, if there's something that comes up that they have to turn it off, they have to document why they turned it off. Uh, they also have a policy when they interview a witness, they have to have a video camera on so that this is recorded, or as an alternative, have to keep really detailed notes. In the event of the, the uh, great train uh, stoppage of 10th of October last year, uh, seven officers arrived. Only one officer followed the GFPD policy. And the only reason he followed it, he was a young uh, recruit and he didn't know better. Uh, two particular things that bothered me on uh, this whole process. By the way, the picture on the uh, flyer here, uh, these are two of the officers who were at the present and their body cams were off during the entire incident. Uh, but uh, one of the things I really was concerned about, uh, the arresting officer has his body cam on for policy as he drives up to the scene. He stops the car. He steps out of the car, looks around, and promptly turns off his body cam for the rest of the incident. Thus, re not recording vital evidence for both the prosecution and for the defense. Plus, during this entire event, at numerous times, uh, the, the uh, patrol car, body cams, and whatnot, pick up uh, up to four officers interviewing the train crew. And these aren't the only two reliable witnesses other than myself at the event. Well, not one single second was ever recorded by any of the officers who had body cams. They made a deliberate attempt to turn the body cams off or not have them on to begin with when they interviewed these key witnesses. And I would hate to see these same officers involved in a really serious crime uh, where a, a uh, you know, really vicious criminal, not like me, uh, get, would get off because the police are not following their own policies. And I think you should uh, either get the police department to follow their policies or, or if they're not going to follow the policies, just take their little electronic toys away from them and give them to some other department that may uh, have some use for them. Uh, any questions or questions for Mr. Rivers? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you again. Bye. Greg Spicer. Mr. Spicer, please. Uh, everybody, how are we doing? A couple of questions, I guess. I'd like to be um, addressed to uh, our esteemed city attorney. I'm here for one reason, and because a lot of people have asked me to ask the question, they would like to know. Uh, where the developments are and where we stand with Fufang right now with the letter of credit and with the rumor that the city is, is negotiating right now to uh, buy that property back or could you give us an update and let us know tonight at this meeting where we stand with Fufang? Is that in the agenda at all? Yeah, Mr. Gossett will give that update. Uh, I believe he's going to have it under city administrator comments. Uh, I think Kyle's going to give some of time to him, so that should be discussed. Great, great. That's good with that then. Also, I'd just like to ask Another question, of Mr. Gostad, could you give, uh, for the record, could you give us an opinion on why the security cameras in this particular building are not viewable by the public? I, I would like it on record. Well, I think if it's been emailed to you, it's public record. So I'm asking him if that's okay. Uh, address the council, please, sir. You're not I'm addressing the attorney. No, you would address the council. <laughs> Oh, I love going around and around with you, you know, Septon. Why do you step in where you don't have to? Can I ask him a question and get, a, get an please answer? Please for the record? Council, sir. That's, that's he works for the city, doesn't he? 
Where are the elected? Can I get that answer from you? Does Mr. Gostad work for the city? Yes, he does. Okay. Because of you now, I am in the city limits. Okay. So I think the people of this town and the people that live in the city limits now deserve an answer to a question. Do you not know the answer? No, I don't know the answer. You didn't receive an email on that? No. Okay. No, can not, not sure explained. Email on it, Mr. Gossett, thank you. Okay. Apparently, you've been involved in it, so maybe you can tell me. Mr. Gossett, has, as far as I know, he's given you the answer. If he hasn't, then you'll receive no. an email answer. No, I didn't get it. Okay. I want it for the record. That's why I'm here. Okay. Not only for my own personal, but for everybody here to understand why the security cameras are not viewable to the public. Are these meetings viewable to the public? These meetings are live. Yes, yes I know. You're not That's what I'm saying. Why aren't the security cameras then viewable to the public? I believe they'll send you the email with the answer, sir. <laughs> it's the same old thing we've been... Okay, I really disagree with you, ma'am, because if you were going to have to put up with what we did for 15 yeah. months, Mr. You, Spencer, would, you would have a rest of council. You would have... Okay, thank you. I disagree with that lady on, on the 10,000 people or whatever it is. I don't know if she got her numbers. That people are thinking you're doing a great job. I think her, her numbers are fabricated and I can disagree with those numbers completely because I know for a fact that there's 5,400 people that disagree with what this council has been doing for 15 months. Okay, so we don't trust you. That's why we come to the meetings. Okay, last week we had all this comment about, uh, about citizens comment being taken away. Are you doing us a favor by citizens comment? No, you're not doing us a favor by citizen comment. That's our right. So don't think for one minute that you are going to take that right away from us and get away with it, like you have done all of this, that you just are not accountable for any of this stuff. Okay, we have a right to come here. We have a right, whether you belong in this community or not, maybe you're not, maybe you're from the outside of this community, but maybe you had vested ties or, or businesses or whatever in this community. So you're still entitled for public comment. Okay, no matter what the situation is, that you're not going to take our First Amendment right away. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Dennis Cadler. Mr. Cadler, please. Thank you. And I will address that council. Thank you. You guys are landlords now? Council's landlords. So your question? The, the council been is this now for landlords for decades. Yeah, the, the city's been landlords to the Jazz Development Authority for decades, yes. So so many how many other buildings do you guys own and buy? Well, it was a lot more a few years ago, but a lot of them have been sold. Corporate center, the Sears building. Uh, corporate center too so it's much less than it has been in the past and i hope that will sell the majority of them that aren't used for public use because my concern with that is as my concern with everything else things aren't well looked after and and we heard two weeks ago how how the people that your landowners over aren't very happy with what you do or say and and they pretty much showed us what you say is not the truth. And you know, if you're going to be in any kind of business and and run it like you guys run this council, it's going to go down the hole, and you're going to lose money. And and see, right now, I can understand why this city is having trouble with taxes. How many businesses, these big apartment buildings, and uptown here have been, been given a pilot program, a 90% tax deferral. You know, instead of paying 400,000 a year in taxes, they're paying 40. And then you wonder why there's a tax deficit around here. And you know, anybody that pays any attention can, can find a problem to come up here and view it every week. Just like my friend, Mr. Sanders, you know, in three different weeks, he's brought up three different topics and you guys just run over anybody that says anything. 
You, you people really don't comprehend. You don't listen. It's just like Mr. Goss did, you know. He's in a group all by himself. And, you know, there, there's really no leadership here. Because if there was some leadership, then when there's a problem with something, it would be addressed rather than just overlooked. And it's gotten to be where things are said that I won't even bother replying to because it's so ridiculous. And time and time again, Mr. Sandy, you know, he steps out of line, but it's okay because that's Mr. Sandy. And, you know, he keeps trying to think that he never is unfair or unjust to anybody. But he does it time and time again. And it, it really seriously bothers me that the rest of this council can sit and go along with this week after week. And now I see even more people that you people make part of your public little program. And, and you know, it just hurts. It's hurting our public. And if anybody can find me 10,000 people that would say anything nice about what you people have been doing from this city, I will pay them $10,000. I will gladly do it because I cannot find these people. These people do not live around me. I put three Foo Fang signs up over a year ago. Not one of them has been touched to this day. You know, people are always complimenting me for what I've been doing for the last year and a half. And like I told them, I don't enjoy this at all. It's, it's the most miserable, miserable day of my life. Because I really wish things weren't like this. I wish you people would take what you're doing seriously, not for your own selfish reasons, but for why people elected you. These people voted for you believing that you would serve them. So please, I ask you, just consider that. Consider doing what people voted you for and, and serving them. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Coachman, please. Thank you. If you could, I'm just, yeah, if you can't approach it, please just set the paper there. Thank you. Could you pass that, please? Will I pass the paper, please? Mr. Coach, this is your time to speak, please. Yes, I know. Could anybody pass this? Go ahead, Mr. Coach. Oh, I know. Okay, I'm going to read it anyway. Uh, for the eyes of uh, 1 Peter 3 12, for the eyes of the Lord are with the righteous and the ears are open unto his prayers, but the face of the Lord against them that I do evil. Oh, she's fine. Proverbs 15 3. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. Proverbs 2, 5 21. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord and ponder all his going. Okay, so the questions I have, and it's read ahead right here because I'm going to read it to Mr. Wiggle and I guess Mr. Bean here. Or else is in there. Have you compromised your office or your position? Have you been threatened, and, uh, intimidated, put in or under duress or any situation or physical or mental harm that would do you any harm to you or your family? Have you been told not to answer the citizen in any form without party authorization? Again, yes me just no answer. That means you don't say nothing. You just look like in a, in a thousand man stare means yes and no means no. So they're pretty much definitive on what are you going to do? So by being silent really isn't being silent. You need to make a stand. And that's what I want to find out. And there's a reason for that. And for this, and Mr. Sandy. Are you compromised by any foreign or domestic enemies? No. 
Are you have you been under any duress? I'm not interested in answering a bunch of your questions, but no. Okay. Uh, sir, are you? Are we going to do this again, Mr. Coach? This is my time. Oh, this yeah, is my can, time. This is my time. Feel free. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are you under duress no, or not, have you Mr. been compromised? Have you been compromised? No, I'm not, Mr. Coach. By any foreign domestic enemies? No, I'm not, Mr. Coach. Thank so you. you thank okay. you. Thank Please you. move on. Thank you. No. Just, no, thank you. Mr. Mr. Mayor, that's a yes. Is there, someone's Mr. a yes. yes? Go ahead and say yes. If you've been compromised. Please stand up. Have you been compromised? Would it be all right if I? Took a moment and responded. Yeah, please. Thank you. I, right now, all I want is a yes or no. We can talk about that after I get done with my questions. If anybody that wants to respond, yes, go ahead. Anyone's been comfortable? Zach, are you are you telling people how to answer I'm, I'm not that Are you telling people the wrong response? Believe it or not, that is a uh, subtle way of, of arresting people by telling them what to do because they are full adults, right? So you're telling, because you did it the last time, you, Mr. Gostad, said, you don't have to answer that. What does that say? That is saying, if you say something, we could come after you. You don't need to say a word, Mr. Mayor. You don't need to say a question. Mr. Mayor, you don't need to say a word with this here. These individuals have the opportunity to answer for their sale. By you telling them to say yes or no, you're putting words in their mouth. You're that is a subtle. Yes or no. no, that's right. I'm asking because I am not under his authority. I'm not in his authority. Nobody here is under anyone's authority. Really? Really? Okay. Let me ask you this. Okay. Do you have wish to go ahead and come, Mr. Let Coach, me continue. Go ahead, Mr. Weber. Yes or no? Mr. Coachman, may I respond to what you handed out two weeks ago and what you handed out tonight? No, all I want tonight is have you been compromised? By your offers, your position, yes or no? We've already been clear. I asked you that tonight, sir. Can you explain to Can me? Can you why, say, do you know what compromise? No means? response would mean yes. I'm, I'm not because sure. sometimes you feel like you're under duress and you'd rather not say anything. You don't know if you stub your toe, you have to figure about it. No, you know if you're under duress or not. We, we are no, uh, under no duress. No, I'm not saying we. I'm asking you. I am under no duress. You're under no duress. Okay. What about not compromise your office or your position? No, my answer, th th these really aren't questions that you've written. I'm, on, I'm asking the you the questions. It's part of why I had a difficult time trying to come up with an answer, because I was trying to consider what you've written, and there, there are actually no questions on here. Mr. And remember, the was, last time you weren't even paying attention, so I don't know what you're doing. Fair enough. I, I kind of stopped paying attention, but after you left, All right, thank you. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. And, uh, thank you for I realized that they, no Mr. Question. Sir, thank you just, for answering. It's worth pointing out. Thank you there for, is no thank question you on for this answering my question. There is no that's all I question on A yes or no, that's two all weeks ago. Mr. Weber, could you stop my time? Because obviously he's not doing it. Sorry, Mr. Coach. Mr. Gossett, are you compromised your office or your position? Please address the council, Mr. Coachman. You know, the reason I said that because I wanted the three letter agencies to hear. Uh, Mr. Coachman, what please sit going. down. Your time is completed. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. By the way, because some your time is completed, Mr. Coachman, please sit down. For me, all. Mr. McClare. Mr. McClare. Mr. Beclair, please. Good evening, Council. Tough act to follow. Um, the reason why I'm uh, here tonight is to speak on uh, proofing. And the topic I'd like to speak on is a failure of proofing. Clearly, nobody has had a good time involving proofing. And when I look at it, right, and I believe I'm the only one who's had six plus successful investments in ad processing plans, it was painful to see the city is now over to. None of this pain and anguish needed to happen, right? And simply one of the things about investing, you ever heard the expression, some of the best investments you make are the ones you don't make. This is clearly in Fufang, even though you didn't make the full investment, the time and effort you put into this project was clearly a waste. And why do I say that? 
Because the very first thing you should have did is what? Double check national security. I had no idea a Fu Feng is a friend or a foe, right? They come from 6,000 miles away in China. And furthermore, my opinion doesn't matter. You know why my opinion doesn't matter? Because I don't have the responsibility, the authority, or the power to stop. Who does? Right, Mr. Sandy, you obviously know that. United States Air Force. So I've said this time and time again, if you have proper legal counsel, right? And I said that early on, right? Part of the reason why I'm successful in processing and development is because I engage qualified and independent people. Had you did that, the first stop would have been with CFIUS, right? I know about the application, right? Because why? I asked questions of CFIUS. I was green to that process. Had the city and Fufang been named to the process, right? The full review would have occurred. What would have the review said at that point? There are national security risk. I don't know the reasons why, and it doesn't matter to me why the process would have gone through. A simple analogy, like Mr. Weigel, if you were employing somebody and they have a felony in their, in their past, you can't employ them with a felony. It doesn't matter what the felony is. I didn't realize this. There's over 20 some different types of felony. So anyway, with that in mind, I'm glad to see going forward with Epitome Energy, it's my understanding you did the proper background check. So that's fantastic. Switching gears, um, and this has to do with all oh, the overall, I would say, <clears throat> communism and democracy. Do you know what the difference is between a democratic community process and a communism is? In a democratic process, the people get to run the government. In a communist country, right, the government runs the people. I think a lot of us feel back here that it's more of a communist process with <laughs> people like me came time and time again and said, hey, let's have a conversation. I'm on the other side of it. It's not my opinion. These are facts you should consider. And, and you guys are just like, Stonewall me and everybody that opposed you, even on national security, right? Mayor Brzezinski, August 18th, two U.S. senators said, stop, don't go ahead. They have a letter for you to sign. These people have national security information. And he essentially told two U.S. senators to go pound sand. That's crazy in my mind. They have national security information. They're trying to help you just like I am. I, that part I don't understand. And the reason why this is, I call it dumb and dumber law firms are engaged, both at the city level with the CFIUS process and Fu Feng's attorney, is they didn't realize, even if you had a non jurisdiction from Fu Feng, agencies inside Fu Feng can come around and stop it. That's what the United States Air Force did. Eminent domain is the ultimate tool in the toolbox. You don't have to be the brightest bulb on the tree to realize that. Do you know where the last time they used it to protect national security? And you're familiar with the Southern Wall, right? They went across lots of private property. What tool in the toolbox did they use? Eminent domain, right? Was that a good thing? We all like secure borders, secure walls. And for me, it's that simple with Fufe. I don't know what the risk was but I'm very glad that they stopped it. I can't understand as American, why wouldn't you embrace it? Why wouldn't you demand that Fu Feng and you both names are on the application? With that, I thank you kindly for your time and wish you well going forward. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Yeah. All right, thank you, Ms. Lundmark. We'll move on. We've got two proclamations. All right, we'll start out with World Wish Day 2023. Whereas the Make a Wish Foundation, uh, Make a Wish was founded by family and friends of seven year old Chris Grecius, who got, to, got the, his wish to be a police officer on April 29, 1980. And whereas the organization known as Make a Wish has since granted more than 500,000 wishes worldwide, operating in every community in the United States and in nearly 50 countries worldwide. And whereas 
Four forward thinking and generous North Dakotans brought the mission of creating life changing wishes for children's ages two and a half to 18 years old with critical illness to our state in 1985. Whereas Make a Wish North Dakota has granted more than a thousand wishes in our state over the last 38 years, delivering hope and joy back in the lives of children with critical illness. And whereas when a wish is granted, a child replaces fear with confidence, anxiety with hope and sadness, or anxiety with hope and sadness with joy. And whereas research has shown that wishes can improve a child's quality of life and produce better health outcomes, whereas Make a Wish depends on referrals, local volunteers, and donors to realize its vision, reaching every eligible child to make their wishes come true. Now, therefore, uh, Brandon Bochensky is the mayor of Grand Forks. We hereby proclaim April 29th, 2023 as World Wish Day in the city of Grand Forks. And the last one here is National Small Business Week 2023 proclamation. That one's on there. I'm going to start at the top here. Whereas America's strongest economic growth in, 40, in almost 40 years has been driven by the resilience of our small businesses that, despite a world pandemic, continue to pioneer innovative solutions to our country's greatest challenges. Whereas by renewing our commitment to supporting small businesses, we can maintain our global competitiveness, build a stronger nation where everyone can succeed from the bottom up and the middle out. Whereas the President of the United States has proclaimed National Small Business Week every year since 1963 to highlight the programs and services available to entrepreneurs through the U.S. And United States, Small Business Administration, and other government agencies. Whereas Grand Fork supports and joins this national effort to recognize the contributions of small businesses to the American economy and their importance to ensuring our local communities remain, remain as vibrant today vibrant tomorrow as they are today. Therefore, I, Brandon Bochinski, Mayor of Grand Forks, do hereby proclaim April 30th through May 6th as National Small Business Week. Thank you. 3.3 then is the legislative update. Mr. Bernstrom, please. Yes, uh, this will be the last update I'll give you guys before our final report in June. The legislature uh, at about three in the morning on Sunday morning voted on their last bill and adjourned. Um, that leaves them, I believe, uh, five days left um, of their 80 days if they need to reconvene it in some fashion. So just a, a couple of things. We're still we're still um, gathering all the numbers. The last bill they voted on was the Office of Management and Budget, and there was lots of things in that bill, and we'll touch on that a little bit. Um, uh, from a Red River Valley water supply standpoint, $180 million in the, in the Senate Bill 2020 for the Red River Valley water supply. Um, that, that's, that's good. It, it, it means not fully funded, but be gets us another two years. They also included a, a hundred, an extra $100 million into the Water Infrastructure Revolving Loan Fund with some of that money dedicated for the local match for the Red River Valley Water Supply Project. Um, for uh, the uh, Career Impact Academy, um, there was a bill early on in the session where the, the, the money at the federal level is being hung up. So the Bank of North Dakota was going to distribute money. Once the federal money comes in, the Bank of North Dakota will, will, will absorb it. Um, there was also the concern of inflation over the time it's taken for this. So um, late in the session, they approved an extra 26.5 million for all of the career impact centers um, across the states to try to cover that inflation cost. Um, is that a loan or a grant? That, that, that is a grant. That is a grant. That is, that is the state trying to fill that, that uh, inflationary cost to get, to get these projects going. Um, well, one of our uh, main uh, uh, priorities coming in was, I shouldn't say one of our main ones, but one of our priorities coming in was uh, potentially with the, the Prairie Dog funds, the, you know, the, the, the money that comes through the legacy fund and trickles down and certain buckets fill up and eventually there's a city and county bucket. We had the request to our legislatures, which we thought was well received, of not increasing the city, the city and county bucket, but did just move it a little bit fur further in front in line. Um, they did not do that, and in fact, uh, there's an extra $175 million that needs to be filled now before it gets to the city and county bucket. So we're disappointed in that one. And then I had mentioned, I've uh, been mentioned in the last several reports that they were working on uh, House Bill 1040, which was uh, ending the pension uh, under ND First, uh, the defined benefit pension plan. Um, that bill did pass. That bill was signed by the governor, um, and they putting money towards paying off the unfunded liability. Part of the reason with Prairie Dog, uh, Prairie Dog buckets, more money in front of us is they added a bucket to help cover the ongoing pension costs. Um, as, as those that are currently in the pension plan, they're going to honor. And then it was ending the pension for all new hires January 1, 2025. And then at about two in the morning on Saturday, they made an amendment to that office uh, of uh, the OMB budget. And uh, in there, they accelerated the time of ending the pension and moving it up to January 1, 2024. 
So I, I bring that up to you guys. I, it's not going to be the, tonight, but I do believe Tangie is going to be giving the council an update on the benefit plans that the city will have in front of it, um, the, the overall compensation package that, that the city has. It, it, looking at you guys as, as you're discussing discussing the 2024 budget, that will be part of the discussion now that the, the pension uh, will be close to new hires in January 1. So with that, uh, again, there'll be a full report probably sometime in June, uh, but I'll, I'll turn it to our chair, uh, Council Member Weber. Hey, Mr. Weber, can I just make one comment first? I do want to say there was a, a, a pretty big win too, that the Children's Museum got allocated $5 million, which brings that really yes. close to, uh, not only to fruition, but I think to a groundbreaking, hopefully at some time in the next uh, year to 18 months. So that's going to be, that was a huge win. Uh, seeing Grand Sky didn't quite, quite get the full ask of getting $10 million to, to build out that tarmac and the infrastructure they need for TRMC. I know some of us will probably get a final report, but these are some big wins for, for Grand Forks. And uh, despite some changes with our legislative makeup um, and appropriations mm -hmm. specifically, I think Grand Forks uh, came up fairly well in the, in the session. And I want to just give a, a real thank you to all our legislators. They worked uh, really you know, extremely hard, whether they were veterans or, or their first term. Uh, they did a great job fighting for us in Bismarck. So I just want to give them a shout out. Uh, Mr. Weber, please, it's your, your committee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, every two years, we uh, come to the end of a legislative session, and it's a, it's a good opportunity for us to take a moment to reflect on where we've been, who we are, and our, our plans for the future. Uh, this legislative session was not without victories, as, as Mayor Bachensky has just pointed out. Specifically, we, uh, we owe appreciation to our legislators who work to support important funding for our roads and water infrastructure, especially the Red River Valley Water Supply Project, as, as John pointed out, which has been a priority of the cities for many years. This project would help to assure a continuous flow of water from the Missouri River during periods of extreme drought. And Mayor, uh, that's, that's great news about the Children's Museum. Children's Museum. With that noted, uh, I am concerned about the disruption in our long-standing relationship with our uh, legislative delegation. Um, over the last 12 years and longer, we've been tremendously successful in working with our legislative delegation to educate the rest of the state about our city's role in supporting the future of our state, especially in relation to UND, Grand Forks Air Force Base, and our ag-related economy. Our role in the Team Grand Forks approach has been success successful in helping to bring appropriated funds to our community and in establishing a statewide reputation for being a collaborative community with everyone generally pulling in the same direction. Unique among other cities, we've been known for collaboration between the city, county, UND, the base, the school district, and especially with our legislative delegation. There has never been lockstep agreement, and of course, legislators have both their own autonomy and their obligation to serve a variety of constituents. This session, we have continued to provide the same level of outreach and communication. We have not enjoyed the same level of responsiveness that we've enjoyed in the past. One key illustration is that this session, one of our very top priorities was preservation of our pension plan for city employees. Our best recruitment and retention tool, a tool that is particularly important during a period when hiring is already so difficult and when being understaffed creates additional expense as we have sometimes had to contract for services with for-profit entities. At the same time, the top priority of the legislature at the beginning of the session was workforce development. Indeed, the need for labor was seen as so important at the beginning of the session that there was a call for legislators to demonstrate how their proposals supported the state's critically important workforce development needs. Instead, the legislature passed the most expensive bill in North Dakota history. As Earl Pomeroy noted in his April 14th editorial, a big spending bill producing little benefit. Who benefits from this? Wall Street bankers who will come in and set up precarious 401k type products with fee schedules beyond what they can get from our well-managed pension funds. Additionally, the divine contribution plans shift the risks onto the backs of workers, provide great revenue streams for large banks, and the tr transition from the defined benefit pension to defined contributions is projected to cost the state $5.3 billion while providing a less secure retirement for our state and city employees. The single most expensive piece 
of legislation in the state's history. There is the possibility that this issue will be studied over the next interim, but it will be a post-mortem study as 1040 killed the pension, regardless of what might be learned from studies during the interim. Beyond that, we should also consider a generally quiet, but no less an essential legislative priority for the city. And that is our perennial protection of our home rule authority, which is based on a basic conservative tenant that local government knows the most about local needs and that those who pay the local bills and their representatives should make those spending decisions. Specifically this session, there were two library bills. One House Bill 12 1205 requires us to follow federal law, which we were already required to follow. This was a waste of time other than providing a grandstanding opportunity for a handful of legislators. The other, Senate Bill 2360, sought to impose unnecessary procedures and completely undefined costs on local libraries across the state. It's hard to imagine that a bill seeking to support children or families in a meaningful way, I think of school lunches or childcare support, would ever be passed without a fiscal note. But this, this nuisance culture war bill included no fiscal note, meaning that there was no fiscal responsibility from the state in relation to the potentially exorbitantly high costs it was willing to impose on local communities. In fact, in passing this bill, the state exempted their own library. We should always be cautious when there is no apparent problem in our community, including no complaints from our taxpayers and no study or discussion uh, of legislative action during the interim. And then suddenly there's a hyperbolic fear-mongering spurned on by out-of-state forces. Our librarian told us there was no problem, and yet our legislature sought to impose processes and expenses at the local level. Fortunately, we were saved by the governor. Thank you, Governor Bergen. We should always work to protect our home rule authority and to assure that Bismarck does not impose unnecessary and reckless expenses on our local taxpayers. With that all noted, let me again repeat our appreciation for the state's support for many of our city's infrastructure needs. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Weber. Any, any questions for Mr. Bergstrom or Mr. Weber? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bergstrom did an excellent job this session. Yeah, thank as you. always, appreciate your work, Mr. Bergstrom. All right, we'll move on to four public hearings and second reading of ordinances. 4.1 determination of protest, allegation in billiards, and we have received no protest. All right, we've seen, seen, uh, received no protest. Anybody here to speak on 4.1? Over the public hearing. All right, seeing so no one, that public hearing period is closed and open up to the council for comment or motions. Madam, yeah. approve. A motion to approve from President Sandy Second and Ms. Osowski. Seeing no further comment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Fourth measure determination of protest with Project 8640, District 773, reconstruct South 20th Street and 17th 20th Avenue South. No protest on this. All right, thank you. Well, the public hearing, anyone here to speak on 4.2? All right, seeing no one, same routine. Uh, we close the public hearing. We've got a motion to approve from Mr. Weber, second for Mr. Cavani. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, six five, saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. All right, we'll move on to five uh, action items. I know we've got item 5.2 and 5.8 that had um, some updates, so I'm going to have those pulled. Any other items outside of 5.2 and 5.8 that council might pull for further discussion this evening? Let's see in a second. Does everyone know? We got 5.8 and 5.2, yeah. All right, we'll look for motion on. Um, all right, hold on one second. <laughs> Uh, five, we got to read a bit real quick. That is 5.1, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, and 5.7. So, if I could have a motion to approve those items, we got a motion from Ms. Osowski, second from Ms. Lonsky. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. And 5.2 and 5.8. 5.2 is in award for Project 8640, District 773, reconstruct the 20th, um, 17th, 20th. Mr. Grasso, you had an update on this one, please. Yes, Mayor. 
Thank you, Mayor Wojcinski, Member of City Council. Uh, this will be uh, one of the last of our larger uh, paving bids for the year. It's getting late in the year for bidding. Uh, we are happy with the bid, by the way. Uh, bids were received and opened on uh, April 27th. We had two, two bidders uh, off construction and strata. Uh, off construction was the, the low bidder on the project. Uh, low bid was in the amount of $1,424,497.65. I will note that this was just over $300 difference from our engineer's estimate. We're really proud of our guys that, that have been really nailing these estimates this year. Yeah, in this bidding environment with the unknowns that we have out there right now, uh, that's remarkable work. So I just wanted to acknowledge and congratulate the team that put that together. Great work. If it was the price is right, you would have won both showcases. <laughs> 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 I'll move approval. We've got a motion to approve from President Sandy and a second from Ms. Osowski. All right, seeing any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Grasser. 5.8 change order number one for city project 8651, the reverb section by Mayor Bichensky, uh, member of city council, what you have in front of you is uh, it's a simple change order, it just goes beyond my uh, 50 percent authority. So uh, back in late 22, um, we went out for bids to Rebrook Station 1. Um, we awarded the bids in January. Um, they were uh, pretty low numbers, some real low numbers that came in. Did a pre-construction walkthrough on mold underneath in the installation last week. So again, we were originally going to utilize the installation that was there with the mold and moisture we can have. So I'm recommending a change order of 41400 to be approved. Questions? I have a motion to approve for Mr. Tommy said for Ms. Lonsky. Um, I think there are any questions for that. All right. Thank you. Where, where is the funding coming from? Oh, I'm sorry. The funding is still going to come from uh, Fund 2121. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, we'll, we'll bounce. It's, it's bounce. All of that, I mean, so now we're on this. Compared to the original bids, the bids were low. This is kind of closer to where we expected. Um, so what we what we did, it, we we called a I guess I could call it an engineer's estimate as well. Um, we we thought the bids would actually be much higher than the two hundred ten thousand. So when I brought it to council um, early in, in January, we did for one part of the building, and then we had an alternate. But they they were low enough, so council decided to. To work, to work, or work both of them. So there's there's been some wiggle room. So what we originally budgeted in 2121, there's there's nothing there. It's just it's just over uh, for my authority. So thank you. All right, sounds good. We got a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. All right, items. We're on the six now. Information items. Six point one HR quarterly report for the first quarter. Thank you, and I, I would point out, I want to just thank the HR team and staff in general. I think you're seeing a lot of cities across North Dakota that are having some trouble um, with workforce from top administration all the way through it. And I think we've, we've held out pretty well here in the city of Grand Forks. So I want to thank uh, definitely each and every employee and, and all the work that everyone's been doing to keep the city running and doing a good job, so. Then 6.2 is your statement on change of cash balance as of February 20th. All right, thank you, Ms. Dorset. On the seven approval minutes and bills, 7.1 vendor list and engineer's estimate as attached. Got a motion to approve from President Sandy and a second from anyone, Ms. Lonsky, second from Ms. Lonsky. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. And 7.2 minutes from January 17th. All right, you got a motion to approve the minutes as is. As is. As is from President Sandy, second from Mr. Kavami. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Minutes are approved as is. Move on to eight city administrator comments. Mr. Phelan, I know Mr. Gustin was going to yeah. uh, pick you back up. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Wichensky and members of uh, City Council. Handful of updates for you. Number one, uh, as uh, Council President Sandy said, thank you to Tammy Lazur. And, and uh, we've been around here for a while, Council President Sandy. So uh, great job in line with Mel Carson, John Hurst, Paul Hodak, and now Tammy Lazur. So uh, thanks for making us proud, and, and this is her one day to shine, but obviously uh, she and her team are working every day of the year to come to this meeting and really perform, but it's an accumulation of a year's work and of, of professionalism, and so um, what an, another great job, and thank you, Tammy, for continuing that um, really terrific work moving forward. I want to give you a, a heads up, um, Council President Sandy, we are planning to put on the City Council agenda in that uh, comment period. I think we, we said we bring it back to the next community hall meeting, so that'll be on there for further discussion. Um, um, as Mr. Bernstrom said, 
Um, we're going to give you an update on the compensation study. You haven't heard from it for a while, so we got a draft now. And so uh, Tanji Bovet's going to come here and, and discuss that with you and where we're at with that particular study. Also, we'll update you on where we're at with the various uh, um, pension um, plans. And so we're going to end up with a, a potpourri of uh, different pension plans um, as we move forward. Um, and uh, the other thing we're going to talk about at the next call meeting, we'll give you an update on Epitome Energy. We have sent a draft uh, development agreement to Epitome Energy. And then uh, on both Epitome Energy and Memorial Village 2, well, we're planning to move forward with uh, some pilot recommendations. So we have been working with Baker Tilly, um, in particular on the Memorial Village 2. Remember the Memorial Village 2 is the, the, the one large unit that combined those two units with the um, collegiate uh, style softball diamond and how we're going to finance that. So uh, in the spirit of uh, you guys finding out sooner rather than later, we're going to brief you on, on both those projects from a pilot perspective and also from a development agreement perspective. So you'll get a heads up sooner rather than later. Um, Council President Sandy um, and then also Council Vice President uh, Weber, you're on our local government advisory committee. I did send out an email today hoping that we can get together on May 22nd. Um, regarding that, uh, I think there is some uh, Memorial Village would like to start moving forward with their project in July, so they want to see kind of where they you know, rest with um, with their um, pilot agreement. You will have at the lo local government advisory committee, we'll have Michaela Hewitt from Baker Tilly will provide you a brief on both those projects. Also wanted to give you an update on another um, agribusiness project. Um, our staff, mainly in Waterworks, is working with Red River Buyer Refinery. They are looking to move forward again this year. And, and so I suspect you'll have another update on what their, their plans are. There'll be a reinvestment in their existing facility as, as in, in addition to maybe a possible expansion. But again, similar to Epitome Energy, you'll know that sooner rather than later. Obviously we hold uh, permits um, before they can move forward, but you'll have to hear some updates. I think the good, the good answer is, as we said all along, um, is that they are planning to renew that facility and, and expand it and we hope for further investments and, and further success. So that's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. We uh, celebrate people's successes and help facilitate it. And it's good that they're going to want to reinvest in that facility and be successful again after all these lessons learned. So with that, I, um, I want to thank uh, Mr. Gossett has some, has some good news. And uh, Mr. Gossett uh, did some really uninformed um, um, negative comments here that are really on towards. And so um, I know one thing, our team uh, department heads and administration love working with Mr. Gosted and uh, hold his advice dear. And he's a really great teammate and a terrific attorney. So with that, I'd hand it over to Mr. Gosted. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayor and council members, uh, thank you, Mr. Phelan, for those kind words. Uh, a couple of things happened over the last week. Um, as you know, uh, I think I reported this last council meeting that uh, with respect to the petition um, to put the vote to the development agreement to a citywide vote. Um, if you recall, the district court uh, ruled in our favor uh, and dismissed that action, uh, including that it wasn't subject to a citywide vote. There was an appeal to North Dakota Supreme Court. Um, when the decision by the council not to go forward with Hufang uh, was made, then there was a motion to dismiss uh, that appeal. Um, oddly, the petitioners opposed that petition. Um, and, and then when we sent out the uh, notice of termination documentation, uh, the attorneys that were representing the city then filed some uh, supplemental information. It included the standstill agreement, uh, the non-extension document that we got from the letter of credit bank, the termination of notice, and then the demand that we made on the letter of credit. That was submitted on uh, April 21st. Um, and on April 25th, the North Coast Supreme Court uh, issued an order to, of dismissal, concluding that the appeal uh, was moved. Uh, so that case is, is now completed. Um, I also reported uh, last week so last week, or the, it must have been last week, that we had made a demand on the letter of credit. That demand was for $2,528,134.29. Um, funds were received in the amount of $2,528,134.29 on May 27th of uh, 
2023. April, yeah. So the entire amount that we did, we, we requested uh, that they wired it in last, I think we got it last Thursday or Friday. That's when I hit the bank account. So um, with that, we would be more than happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Gosta? Mr. Weber, please. So you mentioned that the, the when we requested that it be dismissed, um, the petition supporters wanted it brought back the, um, in favor of Booth Fund? They, they opposed the motion. Um, and and the, the, the issue here, they opposed the motion to have it dismissed as being moot because the project wasn't going to go forward. We were either going to negotiate something under the standstill or not, but the project wasn't going to go forward. Um, and they uh, sought to, they opposed that motion. And so the reality is, is that they wanted the Supreme Court to rule that the development agreement should be voted on on a citywide vote, which would have then potentially jeopardized the letter of credit demand. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're fortunate to have a, 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 such a wise uh, city council. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, first, President Sam. So, uh, Mr. Gossett, uh, because uh, the question was asked earlier, if we are actively negotiating for the purchase of that property, I think it's important to note that the city of Grand Forks is not actively negotiating with anyone for the purchase of the land that's currently owned by uh, Fu Fung USA. And you please corroborate that, yes? That is, that is yeah. President Sandy and city council members, that is absolutely correct. Right. And uh, I think uh, I can say based upon the conversations that we had, Mr. Weber, the mayor, yourself, Mr. Keel and myself, um, when the standstill agreement came up, we had no understanding of what Fu Fung might be interested in discussing, which is why I was supportive of going forward with the standstill because I didn't know what I didn't know. And I think you can corroborate this as well. Once we found out that the reason they wanted the standstill was to negotiate the purchase of the property, will you agree that the general consensus from the group was we weren't interested in buying that property? I think I think the, the um, position of the city was uh, that buying the property would be a pretty monumental task to get over. Uh, to get to to, to uh, resolution, but right. and uh, and you will also agree that we attempted to end the standstill agreement, but Fu Feng's attorneys through Fu Feng disagreed with us and wanted to continue negotiations after we told them we weren't interested in purchasing the property. There were there were some discussions regarding uh, that matter, but the the triggering point for the standstill agreement was it, by by the terms that were negotiated in the standstill agreement was that if we got the non extension from the letter of credit bank, that terminated the standstill agreement immediately. But but it is true that we had informed them that we believe the standstill agreement should terminate prior to us receiving that uh, letter of of non renewal of the letter of credit. We had an email exchange. There is, there is uh, uh, some communication. Uh, I, the only reason I hesitate is because we were discussing it under certain terms uh, with Fu Feng. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I certainly, it's, uh, there were uh, there were indications made by our group that we were interested in in terminating the standstill agreement. Ultimately, it terminated by their lack of renewal of water credit. Thank you, Mr. Gosta. I appreciate that. All right. Any further questions from Mr. Gosta on the matter? All right. Thank you, Mr. Gosta. We want to mayor and council member comments. Mr. Weigel, are you still with us in the comments this evening? The only thing oh. I would ask mayor is just thankful for um, the people in the legislature. I, I don't think we're always going to agree with everything they do, but I, I do think they do a lot for the city of Grand Forks, and we we are fortunate to have a a lot of members represented on the appropriations committee on both sides, and um, I'm thankful for the work that they do. Thank you, Mr. Weigel. Uh, Ms. Osowski, any comments this evening? Um, I guess I hope that citizens around the city participate in the letter of carriers stamp out hunger event. Um, I found it very disturbing 
that he stated that one in 10 children in Grand Forks go to Beth Hungry. So I just hope that, you know, if you're able to, that you can support that. Thank you. That is, that is very well spoken. Um, let's see, we got Ms. Lonsky. All right, Mr. Kavani, no, no, excuse me. I don't believe we have Mr. Bean with us, so uh, Vice President Weber. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to repeat one more time, I've said it before, the development agreement uh, crafted by uh, Mr. Gaustad provided a way for the city to explore the, the potentially largest ever economic development uh, project in our city's history while protecting the city's interest. And ultimately, the reason that the project didn't go forward is because of the, the uh, development agreement. When we had those uh, 21 contingency points and one of those came up, we, we terminated the agreement. Uh, so uh, again, uh, thanks for your guidance and, and your counsel through, through that entire process. And for uh, your courage standing up uh, in, in the face of uh, some, uh, some heckling and, uh, and other annoyances. Um, I'd also like to take a quick moment to comment on the uh, Board of Equalization. Um, in, uh, we've been through this, uh, President Sandy and I now, a dozen years or more uh, going through that. And one of the things that we've frequently seen is, uh, I, don't, I don't know that that happened tonight or this year, but we've seen it in the past. There are lawyers who will uh, travel around the country uh, on fishing expeditions and offer uh, large properties an opportunity to appeal their property tax. Uh, they, they will take a cut of that. And uh, I, I just uh, wish to express my appreciation for the courage to stand up to those uh, sort of uh, ventures. Uh, but also uh, the courage to uh, admit when uh, we've um, perhaps made a mistake in the evaluation uh, and the assessment uh, and note that the uh, several uh, homeowners in our community, uh, house owners in our community uh, appealed and, and uh, you, you did a, a review and we approved those tonight. Uh, finally, uh, I'll kind of echo Ms. Osowski's comment. I look forward to seeing Mr. Honda out on the second Saturday of May this year. And I uh, look forward to seeing him next year on the second Saturday of May for his 30th uh, shot. Thanks. All right, President Sandy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Although uh, the, the public comments tonight were uh, riveting as always, um, there was one point uh, made that I thought it's a little clarification would be worthy when um, we were told that two senators uh, presented the letter for you to sign and that they, of course, have more information than you do. I think it is very pertinent to point out that the governor was involved in that conversation, as well as a U.S. congressman was involved in that conversation, and both the governor and the congressman also declined to sign that letter. Let's not forget that those people are um, carriers of information as well, probably beyond my expertise or the people in this room. And so, um, although it's shock and awe that the senators, you know, they told you you should sign this and you didn't and, and shame on you. Well, I think that we should have a discussion to tell you Armstrong and the governor as to why they didn't sign it. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, well, I appreciate the comments. That was in the middle of the city's review. We were waiting for the response from that. So certainly the prudent thing to do would be to wait for that entity to finish its uh, report. Uh, my only comments tonight is just want to thank Ms. Graff for coming. I think uh, negativity can be extremely contagious. And I think uh, the more you let that be contagious, the more it can take over town. And just a positive uh, message that she brought certainly lifted me up. So I just want to thank her for coming. And equally, positivity can, can be contagious too. Uh, we're above ground, the sun is shining. I think there's a lot to look forward to. So uh, with that, I'd be looking for a motion to adjourn. We have a motion from Mr. Selfsick and Mr. Samuel. In favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Very good.